Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Pittsburgh Pirates. We are at the start of our first season as the general manager of the Pirates. Moved here after a successful run with the Kansas City Royals. And we are in a rebuilding mode. Uh, Pirates had the worst record in baseball last season, won just 55 games. You can see we have the lowest budget and by far the lowest payroll in all of Major League Baseball. We made very modest progress during our first offseason with the team, boosted fan interest a bit, I think from 43 to 47, so that's slightly positive. We're selling more season tickets after cutting prices and boosting fan interest that little bit that we talked about and on target to make a little more revenue per game than last season. Hopefully we can get that number better than projections. We are on a one-year contract. Uh, two big goals for this year, get close to 500 ball and dump Danny Perez, a former Cy Young winner for these Pirates. Uh, we did trade him away, so we'll be okay with that goal. But the play close to 500 ball goal is going to be tough. Um, ran the latest preseason predictions here on opening day and projected to go 60 and 102, which would only be a five game improvement compared to last season. I've been saying that I kind of feel like this is a 65 to 70 win team. Uh, so hopefully this simulation just didn't go in our favor. But uh, we would be still the second worst record in all, all of baseball if we only win 60 games this year, uh, somehow ahead of the Mets, who are on their way to a horrible 41 and 121 season, <clears throat> at least according to this one prediction. But things can obviously change. Uh, don't see any Pittsburgh players expected to be among the top hitters and the top pitchers in the league. So expectations are low. But as I said, I'd like to get to 65 to 70 wins with this team. It may not make ownership very happy because that certainly will not qualify as playing close to 500 ball. But if we can get about half the way from the 55 wins we had a year ago to be in 500 this season, and then maybe be in a position where we can get close to 500 next year, I'd view that as progress. Uh, but we're going to see how the season goes. Last year, the Pirates had the 13th best pitching staff in the National League. I think we can improve on that this year. Uh, last year, the Pirates had the worst offense in the National League. Not so sure that we're going to improve on that, but we'll see what happens as uh, the season gets underway. And I think some could rightfully question, hey, why'd you jack up your scouting and development budgets so significantly? given that you've got such a small budget and such a crappy team. And I hear what you're saying on that. My thought is that these Pirates have, hypothetically, one of the best farm systems in all of baseball, if not the best, with their number one draft picks from each of the past four seasons. But those players aren't going to probably develop the way that they could unless this team sinks a lot more into player development and then hopefully scouting to find players to replace them. We're never going to be a big market team. We're never going to have a huge payroll, especially as long as Robert Nutting's in charge. But if we can really start getting a minor league system that finds players, develops them, and regularly churns them out, we should be able to pretty put a pretty competitive product on the field pretty regularly, even if we need to be dumping out of players when they start getting into their more expensive arbitration years or their free agent years. So definitely a conscious decision to pivot the majority of the money this team is spending to scouting and development. And we'll see what happens. We've also got the number one pick in the draft this year. So hopefully we can find a difference maker in a few months when, uh, when that occurs. So obviously our payroll could be somewhat higher if we weren't investing so much in our minor league system and player development and scouting. 
Uh, but it's hard to envision a scenario where we wouldn't have the lowest payroll in baseball this year. But right now we are less than half the size of the 29th team in terms of our budget. So in terms of our payroll budget. So if we can avoid having the worst record in baseball in a way that's a win, obviously, as I've talked about, I'd like to get up to 65 to 70 wins. Season ticket revenue, also less than half of the second worst team. And then when you look at the total budget, we're still $38 million a year below the second worst team, the Tampa Bay Rays, the second lowest team. So uh, tough financial situation to start with these Pirates, but hopefully we can build it back a little by little, improve a little bit every year like we did with the Royals. Um, you know, I think probably 80% of the seasons that we played with the Royals, we got a bump in our overall budget. If we can follow that same pattern here, slow but steady growth, we can eventually turn this thing around over time. And our game against the Cubs here on opening day is the first opportunity to start doing that. And we'll take it while it happens, but Pirates off to a 4-0 start, swept the four-game series against the Cubs. We also just signed Jared Kelly, who is a very popular player we had been talking through throughout the offseason. Kept rejecting us, but we have signed him to a minor league contract now, so he's assigned to AAA. We are the number one team in all of baseball in terms of the weekly power rankings. Clearly, that's going to change rapidly. But we're going to take it while we can get it for at least one moment. The Pirates are the best team in baseball. And you can see Victor Ave, our big offseason acquisition, uh, leading the league in batting average, home runs, and runs batted in through the first four games of the year. With an otherworldly 2.282 OPS, already put up a .7 batter war in the first four games. So, uh, 8 for 13 with four home runs to start his Pirates career. Clearly nowhere to go but down for him. And his arbitration number next year is going to be close to $17 million. So uh, probably a player we're going to be moving on from after this season. Um, but brought him on board because we needed a legitimate major league hitter. And Kansas City was looking to move on from him to open up some playing time for some younger and more economical players. So uh, we got him. And uh, we're going to enjoy it as long as we have him, even if it's only a matter of months. So as the month of May begins, the Pirates with a 5-1 and one record. So no matter what happens this season, you can see we're uh, putting more people in the seat so far. Clearly, that's likely to tail off, um, especially as we, you know, play weaker and weaker ball. But the one thing that they won't be able to take away from us is that we will have a winning month this season, even if it's the abbreviated month of March. <clears throat> and some bad news for the Pirates. Uh, starting pitcher Edgar Flores is out for three to four months with shoulder inflammation. He is uh, one of the top young pitchers in our system. You can see he was off to a nice start this year, 1-0 record with a 1.74 ERA, 14 strikeouts and 10 and a third innings pitched. Uh, so definitely not optimal um, to be losing him. We are already in not the greatest position with our pitching staff um, because that's where all of the injuries are at this point. Um, Heriberto Rosales, also a young starter, out for another five days. Elijah Corsi, who's been dealing with a sore shoulder injury, healing time is unknown at this point. And then Omar Lopez with a partially torn labrum, still out for another few months. Uh, so Flores is going to join them on the injured list. And that means that we are going to be heading to AAA to find a pitcher to bring up. Uh, certainly one argument would be to go with the recently signed Jarrett Kelly and bring him up um, since he is such a popular player that would give us a little boost. He also theoretically could start even though he doesn't have a ton of stamina. I think I am going to put him on the major league roster 
There are other guys who I think are potentially bigger parts of our future. Alex Simmons being one of them. Potentially Jose Jernigan. But I want to do everything possible right now to um, try to build up some, some financial cushion. And I think putting a popular veteran player onto the roster could help us with, um, with the fans. We'll see. And Omar Ganoa going to slide in as our fourth starter. Um, we'll see what happens. He's pitched in four games and has an 8.10 ERA. So he certainly hasn't been very effective as a reliever at this point. And it doesn't look like we got a fan interest bump um, from moving Kelly to the Major League roster, which is kind of strange, but it is what it is. And Elijah Corsi, um, now healthy after that injury. Um, since he's missed about a month and a half or so at this point, we're going to send him on a rehab assignment for the time being. Um, hopefully have him up if we want to bring him up um, potentially relatively soon. He's definitely in a, mar a marginal player for our roster, but um, younger than some people um, on the team. He's been pretty brutal the last, actually his whole career at the major league level though. Um, three seasons at the major league level and he's put up a 652, a 540, and a 7 spot 07 ERA. So, uh, Definitely has not been successful so far. We'll see how he does in uh, Indianapolis over the next week or so. And Heriberto Rosales, now ready to begin his rehab assignment also. Um, another young pitcher who we think could develop into a pretty useful starter at the major league level. Uh, so we are going to go send him on a rehab assignment too. Jared Kelly is now banged up, just hamstring soreness for a day. But he hasn't been great. Giving up six hits and four walks in his first three and a third innings pitched. He's 36 years old. The only reason to have him on the roster was if we got a fan interest bump, which apparently we did not since we had signed him to a minor league contract. So we are actually going to go and uh, place him on the IL. They won't let us do the 60, obviously, since it's just a one-day injury, but we want to be very cautious with him. And that will give us the opportunity to bring up uh, someone from the minors who may be more in our long-term plans. So we're going to bring up the 24-year-old Alex Simmons, who we picked up in a trade with the Royals uh, in the offseason. See what he can do at the major league level over the next uh, week or so till we have to start potentially thinking about making a decision on either Corsi or Rosales, and then obviously eventually we'll have a decision to make on Jared Kelly as well. And in mid-April, Pirates starting to come down to earth, but still a 10-7 and record after that uh, fast start, no longer in first place. Uh, and the Major League Draft pool has been revealed. As I talked about, we are going to have the number one pick in the draft, so we'll take a quick look at... Um, Allegedly, the top 10 prospects, uh, Edgar Simpson, 21-year-old. Ooh, it's a birthday. Happy birthday, Edgar. Uh, college first baseman, uh, certainly looks like he could be a pretty productive major league hitter. And he could play a corner outfield spot if you had to, but he's really a first baseman slash DH. But certainly the type of bat that just about any team could benefit from. So we will be uh, doing a lot more scouting on him going forward. You can see we're just uh, average rating on him with our new head scout. Andres Navarrete, a 18-year-old high school center fielder. Uh, looks okay defensively in center field. Uh, really would feel better having him in left or right, but he could play center if you had to. Also looks like a potentially interesting bat. Durable as far as his injury proneness. Looking for a big bonus. Tony Carrion, a 23-year-old college center fielder, would be someone who could help us relatively soon, which is nice. Uh, looks like a pretty solid defensive center fielder. Um, got a little speed on the base paths. 
Um, you know, certainly looks like he could be an above average offensive player. He's going to strike out a lot, but if we're looking for someone to help us over the near term, Tony Carrion could definitely fit the bill there. Henry Gonzalez, a high school center fielder, um, looking for a lot of money. Um, but if, you know, he develops the way he's expected to develop, that is a very special bat. Um, and again, you can play him in center field if you have to. Um, you know, would be a very effective left fielder or right fielder. Could play him at first base if you had to. You could play him at third if you had to. But certainly an interesting bat there. It'll be interesting to see how all of these players, um, our opinions of them change as we continue scouting them. Julio Sanez, 21-year-old center fielder. Um, pretty versatile in terms of his speed, his ability to bunt. Decent defensive outfielder. Looks like he could have a plus bat. Um, so he's a nice prospect. Ivan Hinojosa. 21-year-old college catcher, solid defensively. Looks like he could be a pretty nice contact hitter and walk a ton, so he's a interesting prospect. Robbie Artelejo, young right fielder. He's got some nice power. Again, someone who will walk a lot. Not the, based, not the best personality in the world, um, but still certainly in the mix. Felix Gonzalez, a left fielder. Another solid corner outfield bat. Josh Hurd, 21-year-old college left fielder. Looks like he could be a pretty solid hitter as well. And Bobby Rivera, 17-year-old catcher. Um, not the best personality, but very good potentially defensively with a uh, pretty interesting bat for a catcher too, and he's also durable. So some interesting prospects there. Interesting that no uh, pitchers are among the top prospects this year, but we will be doing a lot of scouting over the next three months until the draft, but uh, going to have some interesting decisions to make with the number one pick in the draft. Hopefully we'll have a lot more information and a lot more nuanced view on all of these players by the time we have to make a decision. And we've got a decision to make. Uh, Herberto Rosales um, pitched really well his first start in Indianapolis. Three hits over seven innings. I um, think he's probably more than ready to come back to the big club now. Um, we're going to send down Olivio Lantara. Um, he's got one option year left. Hasn't been all that good this year. Four and a half ERA over 12 innings pitched. Uh, was going to be either him or Alex Simmons. And... Uh, Simmons hasn't pitched that much, but only two hits with three strikeouts over three and a third innings. So we'll see what Simmons can do at the major league level um, for the time being. Going to send Lantada down to AAA, bring Rosales up, and that will definitely uh, bolster our pitching staff because Rosales will certainly take a prime position on it as our number three starter and apparently our... Manager now wants to use Jorge Melendez as a follower. Whatever, dude. Do what you got to do. Um, you're fighting for your job, too, just like I'm fighting for mine. can see 13 and 10 records, so uh, the Pirates are hanging in there so far. Um, certainly do not expect us to end this season with a winning record with by far the lowest payroll in baseball, but um, at least I feel like... Um, we're probably going to make some progress compared to where the team was a year ago. And another injury to the pitching staff for these Pirates, Andy Ochoa, the uh, promising young reliever, hasn't allowed a run in a 105 batting average against an 11 and a third innings pitch this year. Going to be out with tendonitis in his biceps for about seven weeks. Uh, so that is definitely not optimal. We're hanging in there at 14 and 14, but obviously starting to come back down to earth after that great start. Um, Jared Kelly, I guess we'll bring him back onto the major league team for the time being. Um, give him a little more opportunity to see what we've got with him. And maybe, you know, the fans will recognize that he's on the team and uh, enjoy watching things a little more. You can see a pretty steady, steady decline in attendance here through the first month or so of the season. Uh, but the team is still doing a lot better than they were a year ago, averaging over 10,000 extra fans. And you can see the revenue is, um, you know, 21 percent higher than it was a year ago. Clearly, would expect attendance to continue to tail off. Uh, you know, once we're a 
second division club officially, which um, probably not going to be too too long till that happens. But I would hope that we can finish the year with significantly more revenue per game than we put up a season ago. And one of the little quirks of the financial system of OOTP is that, uh, you know, when someone who's a popular player who leaves, um, fan interest almost crashes. This is a pitcher, uh, Shea Hardis, who refused to sign with us. Um, he signed with the Kentucky Wild Heath Genomes for $18,000. He's clearly not a major league pitcher at this point. Um, but fan interest almost crashes because he's a popular player that we didn't bring back. So fan interest down to 44, barely ahead of where, when, where we were when we started this. So uh, just a little frustrating that there's not a little more nuance. You know, if a uh, guy retires at the age, a guy moves on at the age of 42 and you don't re-sign him, you know, sometimes you take a big hit if he was a popular player. This is kind of an opposite situation where the guy's just clearly not a major league player, um, even though he is younger. And uh, you wouldn't think that uh, not re-signing re a guy who probably should be in high A ball would um, have an impact at the uh, team on the major league level, but it is what it is. So the month of April is now in the books, clearly not as successful for the Pirates as our record has slipped to 15 and 17. Uh, still, if we keep playing at that kind of pace, it's going to be a much more successful uh, season than we had expected. But three and seven over our last 10, uh, now six games out in the NL Central. Not that we're really thinking about a wild card, but we're three and a half out of the wild card at this point. Uh, you can see Victor Avellar continues to be one of the top home run hitters in the National League, doing uh, exactly what we brought him on board to do, uh, batting average down to 294. Obviously not going to keep that hot start that he had going. Um, and then Tony Santana, 3-2 uh, and two record, but a 386 ERA over 42 innings pitched, uh, 1.2 pitcher war, so third in the league in pitcher war. Uh, our old buddies in Kansas City having a nice season, 24-9 and nine record, up one on the Tigers in the AL Central. Take a quick look into the stats. You'll remember worst offense and one of the worst pitching staffs um, in the league for the Pirates last year. Uh, let's see what's changed. I have a little more hope in the pitching staff than I do in the batting. And that proves to be well-founded because uh, runs allowed were actually sixth in the National League, uh, but runs scored, we are tied for last. You can see the offense is uh, still at the bottom or near the bottom in just about every category. Uh, but the pitching um, is respectable overall. Our starter's ERA is actually really bad, and I had been thinking that the starting pitching was a potential strength of this team compared to everything else. So shows what I know. Um, we have allowed the fewest home runs in baseball and uh, not so great defense so far. So a uh, 10 and 16 month in April after the nice start in March. Hopefully we can play a little better than a 384 winning percentage here in the month of May. And the injuries to this pitching staff just keep coming. Uh, closer Ernesto Moreno, Ernesto Moreno, <laughs> out with a herniated disc for the next five to six weeks. Um, 4.26 ERA over 12 and two thirds innings, 0 and 2 record, and nine saves. So he hadn't been all that great, but um, this is still, you know, I think one of the players who should be an important part of this Pittsburgh team for the next few years. Just don't know how many, if any, players we're ever going to actually be able to keep when they hit free agency if we don't rapidly improve the financial situation. But um, he's certainly someone who should be a big contributor the next couple years. Um, Elijah Corsi hasn't been great down in AAA, but um, he's only got five days left on that rehab assignment. So we're going to move him up to the major league roster for the time being, uh, see what he can do there. And we'll see if uh, we can start stringing some wins together uh, here in the month of May. I want to remain as competitive as possible, even though uh, we've got a lot of pitchers on the IL at this point, and uh, nobody's coming back until late June at the earliest of any of these players. 
And another injury for Jared Kelly, who's banged up with wrist soreness, going to have a moderate impact on his throwing for the next week. Um, he's been bad. 6.75 ERA over five and a third innings pitch, 10 hits allowed. Obviously a small sample size, but um, he is going to go back on the IL. And we're actually going to put him on the 60-day IL just because we don't really want anything to do with the guy. Um, we got the negative effect on our fan interest when a random minor leaguer left, but we didn't get the positive interest impact on fan interest when we signed Kelly to a minor league deal and then brought him up to the majors. So uh, there's really no reason for us to be wasting time on a 36-year-old pitcher um, who's replacement level quality at best if uh if he's not going to help uh get the fans excited so um going to be looking to bring another pitcher up to the major leagues and i think we'll give jose jernigan another chance um he was up briefly at the end of last, actually more than briefly. He was up, uh, I don't know exactly how long, but enough to pitch 27 games for Pittsburgh last year in relief where he was pretty good. Uh, he still had minor league options, so he was kind of caught up in a numbers game when we got at the end of spring training. But will be interesting to see um, what he can do out of re is another left-handed um, arm out of the bullpen over the next few weeks. Uh, the pitching staff, which I thought might be interesting, is definitely not good. Tony Santana has been respectable. Uh, it's been pretty disastrous for most of the rest of the starters, at least in terms of their ERAs. And we're obviously still missing Flores, Ochoa, and Moreno, who were all expected to be pretty important pitchers for us this year, in addition to Omar Lopez, who um, probably isn't quite the... Um, ability of either of those guys uh, any of those three but um still a young player that we'd like to see more of um because we're gonna have some big decisions to make in this upcoming off season as we try to uh build something here in pittsburgh and it looks like jared kelly's recovery from that wrist, wrist soreness is now unclear so uh he seems to be making the most of the fact that we put him on the 60-day il So the pitching injuries remain an issue. Eliza Corsi uh, headed back to the IL with a strained hamstring, going to be gone for two to three months. Pitched five games, put up a 1.80 ERA over that limited sample size. So he was uh, pitching decently at the major league level, but you can see we've got six players on the injured list, and they're all pitchers. So um, the hope that pitching might be a bit of our strength is um, definitely being tested by the fact that we've got uh, probably a good number of people on the pitching staff right now at the major league level who should be in AAA. And we'll bring Olivia Lantada back up. Uh, pitched five games in Indianapolis now with a 3.41 ERA, so we'll give him an opportunity to uh, pitch again at the major league level see what he can do for us here you can see probably if you're looking closely that the pirates now 20 and 27 here on may 17th so um the season more and more is going kind of as expected which is not great but as i said if we can uh, still get up into the mid to high 60s in wins i would view that as a uh, pretty significant move in the right direction we're, we're certainly on pace for that that type of number And more injuries for the pitching staff. A couple of starters. Heriberto Rosales, a sprained ankle. Uh, it's going to have a moderate impact on his throwing and his running for a week. And Tony Santana, uh, back stiffness two days. Not an impact on his throwing. Um, he did pitch three days ago. So he should be hopefully healthy um, by the time his next start comes around. We are going to be cautious with Rosales and place him right on the IL now. Uh, and I think we're going to take a look at the uh, trade market as well as the free agent market to see if we can uh, pick up someone who's popular just to give us a little bit of a boost there to fan interest. Um, don't honestly care how high quality the pitcher is, um, but we got to do something to um, 
get the fans a little more excited about the team. You can still the, see the steady kind of decline in attendance is uh, going on. And revenue per game, we're only a little bit above last year at this point. So we want to do something to uh, pique the fans' interest a bit here. And the San Francisco Giants will basically take a bag of balls for Elmer Rodriguez Cruz, who's a good personality, not a great major league pitcher at this point. Um, although he has put up a 356 ERA in 43 innings, making $1.26 million free agent after this year. Uh, but he happens to be an extremely popular player. So we are going to um, bring him on board and put him right onto the major league roster. Just need to figure out exactly who we're going to send to the Giants for him and see if we can maybe get the Giants to retain a little bit of his contract also. And we can get the Giants to retain 60% of his contract by uh, trading Gus Calderon, who is a... Uh, reliever who's never going to be in the major league so we are going to go ahead and complete that trade um, fans excited big increase in fan interest players happy to have his leadership also Woo! huge bump in fan interest i guess he's one of the most popular players in history wow um that was better than i expected um we'll put him right onto the major league roster um He's never been an all-star. He's a 34-year-old who uh, has been a very league average pitcher over the course of his career, but apparently he's doing the right things on uh, Instagram or TikTok or something because uh, everybody loves him, and we got a big uh, boost to the uh, fan interest by bringing him on board, so uh, that could be a pretty important trade for us. Hopefully he won't be a... Uh, total disaster out of the bullpen and the month of may ended up being an abject disaster for the pirates you can see we fall into 23 and 38 16 games behind uh and playing very poorly lately with a one and nine record over our last 10. so that is very negative um, taking a look at the team statistics, not surprisingly, um, still one of the worst offenses in all of uh, the National League and presumably all of baseball, 13th in runs scored. And our pitching staff has really struggled recently. We now stand at 11th in runs allowed. So both of those numbers are two spots better than we were a year ago um, at the end of the season. But you can see just a brutal 8-21 and 21 month with a sub-300 winning percentage for the Pirates in May. Uh, definitely need to perform significantly better than that in the month of June. And Ernesto, Mernale, Mer Ernesto Moreno, our closer, is uh, ready to come off of the IL. Uh, we're going to send down Jose Jernigan, who's been pretty brutal. 882 ERA over nine games. Uh, send him back to AAA. Put Moreno onto the Major League roster, and Heriberto Rosales will be eligible to come back tomorrow. Um, I don't know whether we need to do a rehab assignment with him or not. Um, it's been a sprained ankle, but it has been closing in on six weeks at this point, so uh, might not be the worst thing in the world to give him a... Uh, a tune-up down in Indianapolis just to make sure it uh, doesn't turn into something that lingers. And Rosales uh, pitched well in his one start down in Indianapolis, so we're going to bring him back to help the rotation, put Fernando Mello on the IL. He's been pretty ineffective, and he's pitched only three innings in 14 games, so we are clearly using him as a left-handed specialist um, to the extreme um, so not going to be a huge loss to be without him given the way that he was being used uh, hopefully bringing Rosales back um, gets the rotation in a little bit better shape than it was and uh, hopefully we can uh, start to string some wins together because it's been a uh, brutal stretch here for the Pirates um, we knew it was going to be a tough year um, and we knew that that fast start was um, 
a bit of fool's gold, so to speak. Um, but we are standing with the worst record in baseball at this point, half a game behind the Brewers and the Cubs um, for the worst record in baseball. So we're playing in a division that um, Cincinnati and St. Louis are the only good teams in, and they're both very good. But um, hopefully we can string some wins together against the Cubs and the Brewers and some of the other weaker teams in the league because a uh, 378 winning percentage um, – is an improvement from last year, but not the magnitude of improvement I was help, hoping that we would make with this team. Andy Ochoa ready to come back uh, from the IL, so we're going to send Alex Simmons down, put up a 540 ERA over 18 and a third innings for us so far this year. So we'll send him down to AAA, bring up Ochoa, which hopefully will be a little bit of help for the bullpen. And we are nearing the midway point in the season 30 and 47 record um not the worst record in baseball we're actually third in our division uh well tied for third in our division technically but only only ahead of the cubs by a game and a half for the worst record in all of baseball so it looks like pittsburgh milwaukee and the cubs are going to be battling um to see which team is the worst in the league we do have some money to take on some contracts would like to bring on someone who can help us um not just boost fan interest but someone who could potentially help us you know do a little better on the field as i mentioned getting close to the midway point of the year we're 13th in runs scored 14th in runs allowed so our pitching is actually worse than it was a year ago although our hitting is a little better given that we have so many injuries to the pitching staff and so many people who should be coming back to help us in a month and a half or so potentially may look to see if we can find someone to to help the everyday lineup we'll take a look at quick look at the the stats so far this season and sorting it by uh batter war center fielder jordan owens and uh right fielder victor avear along with Rich Salon at third base, Tony Cook at second base, are the um, people with the best wars on the team so far. Among the starters, um, Victor Gomez has been really, really bad in terms of his war. Um, but he's also primarily a DH. He is the Rule 5 pick we got from Kansas City. Looks like a decent bat, and he is hitting two forty seven. Um 12 home runs and 304 at-bats. So it hasn't been horrible production for a guy who's made the jump from high A ball to the majors. Hopefully we can get him through this season, and then we'll see whether he needs to go down um, or not to uh, minor leagues after that. Chris Gomez, who's been our first baseman, has been dealing with lingering injury issues all year. He has played through those. But we got a first baseman who's batting just 201 with seven homers and 259 at bats. Um, so, certainly, if we could uh, get him out of the everyday lineup, um, that would be positive. Arturo Rivas, also another guy, our left fielder and our cleanup hitter, 240 batting average with 12 homers and 275 at bats, but below average in terms of his OPS plus and WRC plus. Um, so certainly, you know, if we can bring a bat who can play first base, DH, one of the corner outfield positions, um, that would be kind of a easy and obvious way for us to potentially improve our offense. Tony Fonseca has also been a really big disappointment with the bat. He had hit pretty reasonably over the course of his career in Kansas City, and he's batting just a buck ninety-four this year for the Pirates. Um, 51 OPS plus 45 WRC plus has been uh, so bad a hitter that his war for the year is negative. Uh, his BABIP is just 207, so the hope is that uh, he can turn that around if he gets a little luckier the rest of the way. But we're going to take a look. It's a little early for the trade block to be completely uh, populated, I'm sure, but definitely want to see what's around in terms of... Um, players with a little bit of a, a bat. Um, let's see, it doesn't look like any huge offensive players. Mario Caballero. It's like an okay bat, making a lot of money. 
223 average, nine homers, 283 at bats. Might be a modest upgrade, but he's also someone who's making $14.3 million. We would pretty much only want to bring him on board if the Giants were going to retain his entire contract. <laughs> they want Victor Avear for him. Good luck with that. Although Avear has uh, certainly slowed down and his batting average is down to 246 uh, with 20 home runs. He's really the primary power threat in our lineup and one of the few players who actually has been above average in terms of his OPS plus and WRC plus. So certainly don't want to take that bat out of the lineup. Um, Jonah Diaz at second base. Um, decent contact, decent home run power. Another guy who's making a ton of money for the Giants. Batting just 200. He is a fan favorite. You know, again, if we could get these guys for nothing, I'd bring them on board. But we don't have any player to make that deal work. Now, it could be because of the salary. If we get them to retain 50% of it, they want Avear. So a uh, little early for uh, teams, it appears, to be willing to trade players. But uh, we would definitely like to do something uh, before the end of July to shake up the roster a little bit and hopefully get the team uh, playing better than it is right now. So we are at the midway point with a 31-51 and 51 record, uh, back to last place in the NL Central. Uh, Robert Nutting in the midseason review of goals. Uh, not really pleased with the team record. We're not either. Uh, does like the progress we've made on improving attendance. Does like that we got rid of Danny Perez. So overall, he says he's been ecstatic with our progress towards the goals. Uh, but not quite as impressed with the team history on and off the field, which certainly makes sense given that our record is not that good. You know, it's a small improvement to the record. The Pirates, at least in terms of winning percentage, have put up the last three years, but definitely not where we want to be. As I talked about, I think we can get this team into the mid to high 60s in wins, and we're certainly not on pace to do it right now. Right now we're on pace to be about a 60-61 win team, which... Uh, just not good enough. Um, so we want to go from being a team that wins in the low 60s to the high 60s. So we're going to have to uh, have to find some uh, tricks up our sleeve to improve things over the second half of the year. And Fernando Mello ready to come back off of the IL. Um, he had not performed all that well when he was up with the big club. Um, he's another one of the popular players we brought on board, uh, similar to Elmer Rodriguez Cruz, who has a 595 ERA. And um, Tony Owens, who has put up a 457 ERA. Uh, some of the guys we brought on board just because they were popular haven't done that well. Uh, so we're going to send Mello on a rehab assignment to the minors. Um, you know, we could try to wave in DFA one of the real popular guys, get them to AAA. Um, the other option would be to potentially move on from David Villalobos, uh, who is the 23-year-old moving from A-ball to the majors. Not surprisingly, not all that successfully. Um, I think he is a potentially interesting reliever for the future, so we'd like to try to keep him. Similarly, um, Willie Arenales, um, who is also making his major league debut as a Rule 5 acquisition with us this season, has a 598 ERA for us, but again, has a profile that suggests he could be a pretty useful reliever down the line if we can just uh, survive the pain of having him pitching regularly for us this season. And in one piece of potential good news for the future, we just promoted Isaiah Hill, who's one of our top prospects from high A ball to double A ball, uh, the 22-year-old in high A ball, 28 home runs and 281 at-bats. So he uh, clearly has excelled at that level. He was the number one pick in the entire draft back in 2034. Uh, looks like he's going to be a corner outfielder. He can play center field for us in a pinch. Uh, we're going to have him play right in Altoona to uh, hopefully get a little more proficient at that position. Um, you know, he could play first base if we had to at 6'2", but 
probably no need to bother uh, because with that bat and that speed, if he uh, develops as we hope he does, we will uh, find a spot for him at left or right or uh, designated hitter. And the Royals have made it, or not the Royals, we're playing the Pirates now. The Pirates have made it to July 1st. Uh, played a bit better, I believe, in the month of um, June than we did previously. Uh, you can see 36 and 53, playing a little bit over 400 ball. Uh, three games better than the Cubs uh, as we try to avoid having the worst record in baseball. Uh, taking a look at the team statistics. You can see we played a 464 winning percentage in June, so it was definitely our best month by far since the very brief uh, time above 500 in March and early April. Uh, still 13th in the NL in team batting as far as runs scored, 14th in runs allowed, so it's been a uh, been a rough go so far for these Pirates, no doubt about it. And while an international amateur free agent isn't going to help us this year, uh, there are some interesting looking players out there. A couple of catchers among the batters kind of highlight the list. Uh, Eric Fuentes um, looks like a respectable defensive catcher uh, who could hit a lot of home runs, durable, 18 years old, so a little older than your typical international amateur free agent. Arturo Inostroza, uh, not the best personality in the world and not a great defensive catcher, but similarly he looks like he could have real nice home run power. Dave Vasquez, a right fielder out of the Dominican, um, again, not the best personality in the world with that poor work ethic, low leadership, um, but certainly looks like he knows how to hit a baseball. Uh, Bill Martinex out of the Dominican um, looks like a respectable defensive player potentially, a respectable offensive player potentially. And then David Turrieta, Venezuelan, um, listed as a shortstop. He's really a third baseman, if that. Um, don't really want to play him in the outfield with that horrible range, but looks like he could be a re respectable major league hitter potentially uh, don't love any of these guys i'm hoping there's someone more interesting among the pitchers doesn't look like it uh, only a few out there tony estrada starting pitching prospect um, if he can harness his four pitches um, he could be decent does look like uh, he could have solid movement solid control question is really his stuff um, but if he's got a five-pitch arsenal or a four-pitch arsenal of um, plus pitches, he could be effective. He's a lefty. He's durable. He is older, 18 years, 172 days. So um, Marty Colon, another starting pitching prospect. Um, three-pitch arsenal potentially if that changeup doesn't develop, though. He's a reliever. Uh, certainly more interested in Estrada. Um, he's not a perfect prospect by any means. But I don't know that I love any of those batting prospects either. Um, you know, kind of going down to the lower ranked guys that we haven't looked at. Jesus Garza, second baseman, uh, just not that good defensively, but does look like he could be a decent contact hitter and durable. Omar Gaines, uh, nice personality, decent defensive outfielder. Looks like he could be a slightly above average ish major league hitter. And Cesar Medina. First baseman can hit a little bit, durable. Victor Ramirez, a catcher, going to struggle to hit at the major league level. So um, I don't love the pool of international free agent prospects, amateurs this year. Um, obviously going to make an offer on somebody. Um, we put the money aside. We might as well try to benefit from it. You know, the guys who have the most potential just have really, really bad personalities. Um, Eric Fuentes, to me, is interesting. Um, catcher who can hit some home runs. He's durable. Play decent defensively. But he's also 18 years old, um, which isn't optimal. I think I'm going to go with Tony Estrada. Um, 
I like that he's durable. He's got good stamina. If he develops three pitches, he could be a back of the rotation starter if he's able to develop that change up fully too. He could be a middle of the rotation starter if everything works out. Um, certainly no guarantees, but we are going to make an offer to him. He's looking for the full five million. We'll meet the demand, submit it, and we will find out what happens with uh, him in our next episode. Uh, you can see it's been an interesting year. Um, probably cut prices too far because our revenue per game is actually down from where it was a year ago. Uh, just haven't been able to sustain the attendance that we had in the early part of the year. And uh, that's definitely costing us. Um, I don't know what we do to turn that around. I guess, you know, we could cut ticket prices right now further to try to put some more people in the seats over the second half of the year. The issue is if um, it doesn't spur on a lot more people to attend, it's just going to be an even bigger hit to our revenue per game. Um, you know, ownership wants us to get to 21,400 by 2040, so we're well on our way to doing that. Uh, but right now we're doing it in a way that... Um, is hurting our revenue per game, which is just not uh, not a good situation. Um, I'm not just going to sit around and do nothing and hope that things get better. So we are going to slash those prices to $10 for the rest of the season. Try to see if we can get some extra fans involved. Hope that the... Um, attendance goes up materially because um, you can see the expectation for revenue per game is uh, plunging with that move. Um, maybe we shouldn't do it. Um, and if we up it to 13. Yeah, if we up it to 13 expectation is that revenue per game is going to get better i hate to uh raise the prices on this crappy team but we'll actually go the opposite direction and raise our prices a little bit hope that um that's just not going to make enough of an impact we're going to raise it to 13 dollars, and we got confidence that people are going to be coming out to pittsburgh in the second half of the year you should have bought your season tickets when we put them at 12 dollars because uh we're going to raise the prices the rest of the way and see what happens with the Pirates. So we will find out what happens with our international amateur free agent, what happens with attendance based on our new ticket prices, and uh, real importantly, what's going to happen in the rookie draft, where we're going to have our choice of anybody on the board in the first round in uh, just a couple of weeks. And then we'll be heading into uh, trade deadline time to see if there's anything that we can do to improve this team and uh, hopefully ensure that we can at least maintain a 400 winning percentage for the season it's not a uh, it's not the most ambitious goal in the world i acknowledge but um i want to see some progress from the team on the field this year and then we'll worry about 2039 when it's 2039 so until our next episode thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day